and welcome back to the truck, which is outside the mill. Uh, we've got a bit of a problem that we keep getting our power boards wet. And when we're steam cleaning, water does go kind of everywhere, but we've tripped the earth vault protection circuits in our uh, breaker box a number of times in a day, uh, consistently <laughs> at times, when things just get splashed. It, it happens. So. We want to make some power boards and extension leads which are waterproof. To do that we've got some cable which is just flexible cable and uh, this one in particular <laughs> we're going to pull apart. It's uh, a good length of cable but this alone trips the earth fault detection. This was in the mill when we got here so it's of unknown origin and unknown quality but I think the cable itself will be fine. So. We're going to attach that to a couple of outdoor units. So these are uh, what we've used on the IBC for power and give us a little outdoor box. You can get these with um, earth fault protection, GFCIs, uh, RCDs, depending on what country you're in, what's it called. Uh, but this will allow us to have our power plugged in and protected from splashes and even general soakings from an extension cord. So, let's get on with it. cables but I don't know where my ferrule kits they are. They're in storage somewhere. Being stranded cable directly into a screw terminal is not the best idea. It's uh, not great for the cable, not great for longevity, but uh, this is temporary. I have a good bundle of extra cable in here. Even put a cable tie around it. The reality is that extension cords get pulled on uh, when you need a little bit of extra cable, so I'm just going to basically tumble this back inside itself to provide some retention so that it can't be pulled out. Tiny cable ties, but don't need much. bits for if you're mounting it on the wall. Oh, we've got an extra little gray bit too. Uh, so yeah, you've got the extra rubber bits in case you're mounting it on a wall. We're not doing that, it's just on the ground. So that's all we need to do. Now we just need to put the plug-ins on. We 
tighten this down, it squishes the rubber of the grommet onto the cable, so then that cable becomes waterproof. from the UK this is a standard UK plug you can buy these in grocery stores or as we have from a builders merchant or electrical store and they're quite interesting because they're built for sort of different times where metal savings were a big thing in the wars and uh, so we've got a fuse in every single plug which makes these quite bulky but with a different length of wire here, it means that if you give a good yoink on this, your live's always going to come out first, then your neutral, and finally your earth will come out. So it sort of protects the, the device which is plugged in and the user to make sure that earth will always remain connected, even after the other wires have uh, disconnected, which means that we have a much safer system. Quite fascinating, I think, and just the history behind it and the engineering behind it is makes it one of the most interesting plugs around, I think. And these are also insulated so that you can't touch a live connector as you pull the cable out. Once again, these absolutely should have ferrules or bootlace crimps on them to protect the strands, but they're in storage somewhere. Another interesting feature of these is they all have integrated strain relief for the cable. So you reduce the chance of a cable pulling out and you reduce the chance of a loose connector, which is very important with these things. One down, two more to go.
this restoration project is to not die. So having waterproof boxes is a really big step in the right direction for that because let's face it, getting electrocuted is just gonna ruin anyone's day. So we've got ourselves waterproof boxes now on extension leads where before we were using extension leads that were not waterproof. We've tripped the RCD multiple times in a day before because things have just gotten wet from splashes or pools of water being blown around by our blower and it's not great because we lose lighting which means it can be very difficult to go up and down the stairs especially in a steam filled building and we don't want it to get to the point where maybe that RCD doesn't trip and we have a pool of live water on the ground which could happen very easily but this is full of lots of fittings and there's hoses coming into it. If the hose just comes out of the connector, we could very rapidly have a big pool of water down here, which has got our electrical socket sitting in it. So now we have ourselves a waterproof box and all of our extensions, which are running our blowers and lights and pressure washers can all be waterproof, splash proof, puddle proof. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. See you in the next video.